Hi there, my name's Rise. As we all know, DFO is around the corner, and I figure what better way to celebrate than by having a lengthy and detailed discussion about Blitz and Fatigue. So where to begin? Let's see, I'll briefly go over what Blitz and Fatigue is. This includes their immediate pros and cons. Then I'll go over the long-term effects of each system. Already I can tell some people are nodding off, thinking to themselves, why should I care? Now that's a good question, one that I'm not sure how to answer. But just hear me out and maybe you'll end up enjoying this. And I know a lot of the newer people to the scene of DFO will be tilting their head in confusion, but with a little bit of patience, they'll understand too. Hopefully. Anyway, first let's go over fatigue points. What exactly are fatigue points? Short answer is that it's a limiter to how many times you can play in a dungeon with a character. This is the system Neopo will be using in the new DFO Global. Blitz points on the other hand is a different system entirely and one that was unique to the old DFO. Nexon created Blitz after listening to fans complaints about the fatigue point system. Basically the new Blitz points allow players to keep playing non-stop in PvE. The longer they played, the more experience they would get but at the higher cost of repair bills and lower drop rates. With that explanation over with, know that I oversimplified both Blitz and Fatigue by quite a lot so if you really are curious, I'll put some links down below for your convenience. Now where was I? Right, so everyone's probably thinking, well isn't it obvious which is the best? Blitz of course. I could play forever with Blitz with my favorite character. There's nothing to argue about. And in a way, you're right. In a perfect world, Blitz would be the best system. But sometimes the answer is more convoluted than we expect, which is what makes it so interesting to study, but that just might be me. First, we need to consider the hidden consequences of each system. Let's start with the fatigue points. We know that by having fatigue points, people that want to play long hours will need to figure out other ways to spend that time. This can include more PvP, towers, or playing other characters. As a direct result, the PvP and PvE scene will greatly benefit. The skill of the average population will increase too. It makes sense if you think about it. Do more of something, the better you'll get at that something. It's as simple as that. I'll admit that for the PvE, this point is pretty debatable. One side can argue that multiple characters does not increase PvE skill. But it is a fact that the more you PvP, the better you will get at PvP. But what about the cons? There are several cons of fatigue, but one is a very major concern. In the western market, freedom of choice is a very big deal. There will be some people that opt out of playing DFO entirely simply because they'd rather be playing something else without any of those restrictions. Besides that though, there are some people that play one single character and then spend the rest of their time doing something else. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Blitz. Blitz actually has a few hidden consequences that we'll be going over. But before any of that, let's talk very briefly about its pros. Blitz lets us play pretty much forever and there's no restrictions. We even get added EXP bonus too. In fact, at first glance, Blitz is an amazing system. But if it was perfect, I wouldn't be making this video. Now time for a bomb. Blitz actually makes gold farming dramatically easier. If that didn't get your attention, then I don't know what will. Gold selling is a sort of underground occupation that sells gold for real life cash. So there's no limit to how much PvE you can do. Gold farming bots can easily farm their way to cap and start selling gold. The only real limit is their ability to host more accounts. This became a huge issue as you can imagine. Before Blitz, we had gold farmers sure, but it was never this bad. Eventually buying gold became so cheap that it became a running joke within the community. Back before Blitz, having 10 million gold was considered an accomplishment, but afterwards you can buy 10 million gold from those gold selling websites for just 3 bucks. Don't believe me? Well here's some proof. Hello everyone, welcome to visit GameIM.com, game service provider. Today I want to introduce how to buy Dungeon Fighter Online Gold. Choose your game, DFO, Dungeon Fighter Online, and server, how much gold you want to buy. We're having discount activity now. Customers could enjoy 5 cent extra bonus and their currency. Add them into the cart. 
fill in your information and choose your payment method. 100 million gold costs 20 GBP. That's 30 bucks. That's ridiculously cheap. Even I was tempted to buy gold back then, but uh, I had some integrity. <laughs> This led to a sort of domino effect, where once buying gold became commonplace, all the auction house items became ridiculously expensive. Imagine trying to buy a single item for nearly 300 million when it used to cost 50 million before. That's how bad it got, and the only way to afford it is either being really savvy with marketing or gold buying. And gold buying ultimately made the prices steeper. The cycle was never ending. We didn't even factor how this affected the user base. Imagine for a second that you are a new player. You go to the auction hall and notice that everything is outrageously expensive. A simple avatar piece is 3 million and the ones with good stats are approaching 6 million. Of course you would be discouraged. Newer players in the scene would basically leave after playing for a while. Slowly but surely, the player base diminished to the point where even Nexon started panicking. Not only that, but because Nexon's complete disregard of the player base, updates were few and far in between. Veterans ended up leaving too. The situation grew worse by the second. There are a lot of minor consequences of Blitz 2, but compared to the one I just stated, they don't compare. But if you really want the details, I'll include some links. Also, I'm not claiming that Blitz is the reason why DFO failed, because it isn't. Blitz was just one factor in many to lead to DFO's death. Anyway, let's wrap things up. Both systems had their advantages, and in a perfect world, Blitz would be a great system. But in order for Blitz to truly work, Nexon would need to make a few policy changes. The prominent one being tracking down gold sellers and farmers like it's their job. Which it is, but uh, I mean, Nexon isn't really known for doing their job correctly. Jokes aside, it would be really difficult to manage Blitz. It sounds great in theory, but difficult to put in practice. To make Blitz not destroy the economy will require a ton of work, and Nexon just wasn't geared to do that sort of thing. Also, every time Nexon went around banning gold sellers, they would normally ban a lot of innocent players too. That would be alright if those innocent players got their accounts back, but Nexon was notorious for terrible customer service. Seriously though, your chances are higher with the lottery than it was with their customer service. I still have nightmares. Well, before I get into any more tangents, I'll end it here. The too lazy didn't watch version of this video is that Blitz is great in theory, but fatigue points is great in practice. Hope you all enjoyed, and oh wait, I don't think I ever mentioned what the video title of this series is. It's Stories of the Past, and it's where my friends and I go on to discuss a variety of topics regarding DFO. Honestly, it's pretty flexible, so if you want us to discuss a particular topic, just let us know. Once again, I'm Rise, and thanks for watching.